All right, so I'm gonna show you a real easy way to measure latency of digital gear using an analyzer and pink noise. Now we can do it using smart and a computer or DAW and there's a way to look at waveforms, but this is a lot easier and readily available and it's inside of most digital consoles already so you can look at your audio signal path and see if there's issues really fast and calculate what that latency time is. So let's get into it. So what I've got here is I'm using a pink noise generator. Right now I'm using the pink noise generator built into this wing, but you can use an external generator as well. It doesn't really make a difference. I've got that internally patched to channel one. And I've got channel one, as I bring this up, you can see it's coming up on the left side of the main out. I've got it panned, we can look at that, and we've got it panned all the way to the left. I've got the output, the left out out of the XLR back of the console coming back in to channel two. And channel two is panned, as we can see here, hard right. So if I bring that up, we can see that that comes up. And you can hear the two summing together. So let's go ahead and look at these signals. If I select channel one, we can see that we've got a very flat analyzer on that. If we select channel two, we've got a very flat analyzer on that. But these are both sent to left and right, and one of them is just going to the console output. The other is coming out of the console back into the console and then going to the output. So the actual console is in series with it. We've added the console in. We're actually testing itself. So let's see what happens when we look at that. And if I solo that up, we can see that now we have comb filtering. We've got a series of dips in the response. You can see in the small graph, in the small response there, and in the bigger one here. And if we take and roll this frequency slider here just as a reference to around where that is looks like to be about there we can see that that's about 380 hertz or so well now we know the frequency of the cancellation of those two signals all right so we're seeing a 380 hertz cancellation and that's going to be the one half wavelength point at double that frequency and we can go up to that somewhere around here we're seeing a bump, a peak, a summation, and that would be the full wavelength. But it's very hard to center in on that full wavelength, but it's very easy to find the cancellation. So we'll base everything off the half wavelength. All right, so 1,000 milliseconds, and we'll divide it by two times 380. All right, so let's go ahead and do that. So we'll take our 380, and we'll multiply it times two, equals 760 and then what we'll do is we will divide 1000 divided by 760 equals 1.315 milliseconds all right so this comb filter is telling us that we have about a 1.32 millisecond latency differential between the direct one and the one that comes out of the console and back in. This console has a 1.32 millisecond latency. According to this test, let's go ahead and verify those results using SMART. And we will hit delay find. And it says that we have 1.33 milliseconds time offset between the left and right out of the console and we calculated 1.32. We were within 0 0.01 milliseconds just looking at an analyzer built into the console. Super cool, super easy. All right, let's go ahead and connect the console back up. Okay, so we determined the latency of the console using the internal analyzer and confirmed it with SMART. What else can we do with this? What about the internal compressors or EQs, all this software-based manipulation that we have available to us? 
what impacts latency and what doesn't. Let's take a look at a few things. All right, so what I'm gonna do for this is I have the internal pink noise generator running to channel one. And let's go to channel three and we will have the pink noise generator go to that as well. So let's go to that and pick up oscillator one. And now the pink noise generator is going to one and three. You could do this also with a Y cable on two inputs or using an external pink noise generator, any way that you can get the same signal going to two places. All right, so we'll bring that up. And channel three is panned hard right, and channel one is panned hard left. And they could be panned center, and we could listen to them effect. And I've got them panned out so we can hear them separately or together when I do the recording. All right, so now what we'll do is let's select three, and we'll look at the analyzer, and we can see that this is nice and flat. And then we select one, and we can see the analyzer is also nice and flat. And if we select the main out, let's bring that up, and we see also that is nice and flat. Now what happens if I put a compressor in there? So let's go ahead and put the insert on, on. Let's put this precision limiter in. I've turned that on and it's not doing anything. It's just put in line. And let's go ahead and look at what it does. So now we'll look at the main out and look at that. We've got our comb filtering. So now we have the ability to calculate how much latency that is added. So let's go ahead and slide that over and we can see that this is about there, 280 hertz. We can take a thousand divided by 280 times two or an easier way to do it is just divide 500 by the frequency. So let's go ahead and do that. So we'll do 500 divided by 280 equals 1.785, about 1.79 milliseconds for that precision limiter. What else? Let's try something different here. Let's go and switch this to the graphic EQ. So that's in instead. And let's go ahead and go back here. See what we got. Take a look and oh, look a completely different latency. Let's go up to that, and that's up in this range here, around 714, so let's do that clear. 500 divided by 714 equals about 0.7 milliseconds, much shorter, so it takes a lot less processing time. Now, do these really matter? Yes and no. If you have, let's say, two guitar mics and one of them is going through a compressor and the other one is not, now you've shifted them in time versus each other. It's like moving one mic farther away and you're introducing some phasing and some comb filtering. They're not aligned anymore. You can either use the time delay on the channels to try and realign them or you could put identical compression on both, even if you're not using it on both, just inserting it so that you get identical times. When you have the same signal summing with itself at different times, you're gonna get that comb filtering and that may degrade the quality of the sound of your mix. And we should be able to hear that. We can hear that. So let's, I'll go ahead and listen. We that's the sound of pink noise by itself and that's a comb filtered pink noise of the two added together and watch what happens if I take that effect off. Now with the effect off, one Same. 
So you could actually take and assign pink noise to multiple channels and run them through and make sure everything is timing up or find out where your timing issues are and make decisions of whether that's relevant. Now, if there's two completely different things, if you have compression on a kick drum and not on the bass guitar and it's putting latency on the kick drum in relation to the bass guitar of a millisecond or two, it's not going to matter. It's just making the kick drum a millisecond or two farther away. And for things like parallel compression, where people are running things to groups and to the mains and putting compression on the groups, the offset, those latencies and resumming, that can really be catastrophic or detrimental to the sound when you're summing multiple things through multiple paths. And this is a simple way to test all of that. All right, well, I hope this is interesting and helpful and cool, cool. Thank you for hanging out with me again.